Welcome back to another mini series. This time we're going to talk about the Sonoff POW. It's called the POW because it monitors power. Makes sense. I want to use it to see how much energy my 3D printer uses so I can figure out how much it actually costs to make something. Vamanos. This is the Sonoff POW R2. It's got the serial pins labeled right here. I don't expect flashing will be too much trouble. Connect our FTDI adapter, hold down the onboard button, plug it into the computer. Start flash easy. Select our sonoff.bin file, hit flash, and hope for the best. Looks like it's working. Right off the bat, first try, not bad, not bad at all. Now before we disconnect our USB to serial adapter, we can use Termite to load a bunch of the settings that we want. So let's do it. Start Termite, you can go to settings here, make sure you got the right COM, make sure you're at the right baud rate. Click OK, waiting for the remote device to send data. Oh, there we go. Okay, now it's ready. Now here's something fun. You can use this backlog command and put everything that you want into your Sonoff all at once. So instead of using, instead of typing SSID one and then the SSID and then password one and then the password and MQTT host and then the host, instead of typing it all separately, oh, it's going into AP mode. You can put it all in at once. I've got mine up here. So I'm gonna move this off the screen for a second because you don't need to see all this. And I'm gonna paste in that whole long line of stuff and hit enter and it worked. Ha, <laughs> all right, so that put in my SSID, my password, my MQTT broker information, the name of the unit, the friendly name, the topic name, everything except I didn't put in the module type because I wasn't sure that was gonna work. So I looked in the dropdown list of all the module types available because they all have a number and the POW is 06. So I type module 06 and that should set the module type to POW. And it did. I love this thing. Termite's awesome. So I went to my router and there it was. It was named appropriately based on what I put in the backlog. It showed up as a POW, just like it told me it would in Termite. And here you can see with, uh, with it set to be a POW, it gives you all of the energy readings that you can get from the POW. Voltage, current, power, power factor, and then today, yesterday, and total. So that's pretty cool. Now the POW needs calibration. That means you need to connect a load to it with a known value, like a 60 watt bulb. In my case, I'm gonna use a 13 watt bulb. Now there's another way to do this, but it requires you putting your multimeter in line to directly measure the voltage and the current. I can do that and I've done it, but that makes even me a little nervous. And if you've seen me, I'm generally not too nervous about these things, but in this case, I'm gonna do it the safer way. We've got the POW connected to a 13 watt fluorescent light bulb. I'm gonna plug it in. This is the point where it'll either work or it'll explode. Okay, it's plugged in. I don't see any lights coming on. Oh, okay. It's working. <laughs> okay, there we go. I found a very high tech way to block out all that extra light. Just gonna put that right there. Now we're gonna turn on the load. Now if you turn on your load and you don't see voltage and current, etc., show up up here, go back to configure module and make sure that you selected the correct POW because there's a POW and there's a POW R2. Don't be a doofus like me and select POW when you have the POW R2 or you'll never get any readings here. But now that we got the right module selected, it's showing 120 volts. It's showing my current of 0.18 amps, which is more than it should be. And it's showing 14, 15 watts. Now that I've got the right module selected, the POW R2 that is, I'm gonna redo that calibration. So I'm gonna to go to the console, voltage set, 
120. Power set, 13. And current set should be 108. Okay. Now it changed from where it said 14 watts, now it says 13 watts. Where it said like 1.7 amps, now it's 1.8. Now it's more accurate than it is by default, hopefully. Now I'm gonna hook it up to a plug strip so I can connect my 3D printer and see how much power it really uses. This is how I connected my POW to a plug strip. It's a simple plug strip from the dollar store. I cut the cord, put the cord to the line in one of the neutrals and one of the grounds, and then I took the other part of the cord and went from the line out, the other one of the neutrals and the other ground, and just drilled a hole in the bottom side of the POW and into the back side of the plug strip. It actually makes a nice little package. Of course, you don't have to do it this way, just showing you what I did. Now I've got my POW set up with my plug strip, and I plugged in and turned on my 3D printer. Right now it's just idling, it's not heating up anything. I'm going to start heating it up, and we'll watch how that changes. Woo! 3.3 amps right away. Wow, that's impressive. i got to get the power bill out now and see how much money I'm paying per kilowatt. So this is my latest electricity bill. And you can see that at the third tier, they charge us about 14, maybe 14 and a half cents per kilowatt hour. If my 3D printer is using 0.35 kilowatts, and I'm running it for an hour, at 14 cents per kilowatt hour, we'd have this, 0.35 times 0.14, about 5 cents an hour to run the 3D printer. That seems really low. Maybe my math is wrong, but that's good news. It means it doesn't cost that much to run it. That means I can run it more. I almost forgot to tell you how to include the sensor information in Home Assistant. I tried using the discovery command, but it only added the POW as a switch and didn't include the sensor information. I want to go into more detail in another video about JSON formatting and what all this gobbledygook means and how you figure out what you need to put as the value template to get the right information. But for now, just copy what I've got here and create these three new sensors in your configuration.yaml file. Just make sure to change where mine says TAS5 to whatever you have for the topic for your POW. Well, that's the Sonoff POW. I'm actually pretty excited about it. The way I've got it connected to that plug strip, I can run around my house with it, plug it into all kinds of things, and get a pretty accurate reading about how much power I'm actually using. That not only helps make decisions about how we're going to save power and not have a huge power bill, but it can also give us an idea of how much we're loading some of our circuits and whether or not we're getting too close to being overloaded. I was pretty surprised that my printer is drawing 3 amps. That just seems like a lot. I hope that was helpful to you. Till next time, adios. You've seen this screen before. 